great morning, great morning. Once again, we're coming before you and you're seeking the face of God. And uh, this this morning, we're going to go into um, dealing with troubles, troubles in our hearts and minds and souls. And we're living in troubling times and we really have to seek the face of God. We have to seek uh, the peace of God, which he promised to give unto us. And so I'm going to sing this little song, and then I'm going to pray. And this song is entitled, In the Garden. I come to the garden alone, while the dew is still on the roses, and the voice I hear falling on my ear, the Son of God disclosed. And he walks with me and he talks with me And he tells me I am his own And the joy we share as we tarry there None other has ever known The joy we share that's between me and the Lord, and that's between you and the Lord. And today is going to be entitled, Be Still and Know That I Am God. And I got up last night because I was hearing some uh, information in my spirit that had me tossing. And, and, you know, I don't care how anointed you are, how long you've walked with God, there are going to be times in your life that things are going to come to trouble you. I was talking about to my husband about the voices. So many people are talking. But you know, and there, there's so many voices in Scripture say there's none, none of them are without significance. But when we're going through troubling times, we want to hear from God. We want to hear that voice that tells us it's going to be well. And it made me think about Elisha. And we're going to the book of Kings, the 19th chapter. If you know about the prophet Elijah, his job was to go and fight against the prophets of Baal. And in fighting against the prophets of Baal, he had an enemy, Jezebel. And, and he was strong in his battle. And sometimes, no matter how strong you are and what season you're in, there comes a time in your life you can get weary and you can get weak. And Elisha had battled the prophets of Baal. He had, he had demonstrated God's uh, power over them. But it had, you know, when you go for a long time fighting, sometimes you can't get weary. You can't get weary and you need to be strengthened. So in the first Kings, the 19th chapter, uh, after uh, the scripture said that the, the hand of God was upon Elisha, and uh, he had girded up his lawns, and he had ran, and he had um, gone before Ahab, and God had used him to prophesy to tell Ahab that it was going to rain and different things. And he was speaking uh, uh, as the mouthpiece of God. But the time came in verse uh, 1 of First Kings. Uh, it says, Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done with all how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. So God had used Elijah in a mighty way, you know, and then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah. Now here comes Jezebel. After Elijah had done such a great work, the enemy has a word. And this word was sent by the mouth of Jezebel. A messenger unto Elijah saying, hallelujah, let, so let the gods do to me and more also if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. In other words, I plan to kill you. That is the word from the devil through the mouth of a Jezebel. Let us pray. Father, we thank and praise you that we can run to you for refuge. You are our hiding place. We come this morning, O oh God, even though the enemy has purposed to kill some of us. 
to kill our joy, to kill our peace, to kill our lives, to kill us, Lord. We are seeking you. You said in the time of trouble, we can call upon your name. And God, we're coming to you today and as humble as we know how, asking you, Lord God, to send a word. Just one word from you, Lord. That's all that we need is one word from you. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank and praise you that you are our refuge in the time of storm. And we are calling upon you today. We're seeking your face. And we ask you, oh God, to take us deep down in the well. Hallelujah. Take us deep down in your word, Lord God, that we might, hallelujah, hold fast. Hallelujah. For we know where our help come from. And we thank and praise you. And we commit ourselves into your hands. In Jesus' name, amen. So we see here in verse 2 of chapter 19 that Jezebel, which is really a servant of the devil, has sent a word to the man of God. And it says, when he saw that, this is when Elisha saw that the devil was after him, he went for his life. Now he just finished battling all the prophets of Baal. But when he got this word, the Bible said he went for his life and came to Bathsheba, which belongeth unto Judah, and there he left his servant. So he came to the place of Judah, which means praise, but he left his servant there, and it said he himself went on a day's journey into the wilderness. He left the place where he left his servant in Judah and went on to the wilderness. And I'm telling I know for myself, when you, your spirit can get so troubled, you're looking for a hiding place. He went into the wilderness a day's journey and came and sat down on a juniper tree. And this is what he said. He began to talk to God. He said, request, request for me. He said, Lord, that I might die. In other words, Lord, <laughs> I can't take it no more. He said, it's enough now, Lord. This is what he says in verse 4. It is enough now, God. Take away my life. It can get so heavy and so burdensome in this life at times. When things can come into your life, trouble can come into your life, the prophet of God said, Lord, it is enough. In other words, I, I've taken, I, I've, go, I've gone through enough already. And I know in this season and time, so many people are saying the same thing. How much more can I bear? How much more will I have to endure? How, how, how much can I uh, uh, take in this life, Lord? The prophet said, Lord, it's enough. I am better, not, I am no better than my father's. I'm no better than other people, and I am preaching your word. I am fighting for, the, for, for, for your word. I'm coming up against the devil, yet I am now in this state, in the wilderness, pleading for you to take my life. And as he laid and slept under the juniper tree, verse 5, behold, then an angel touched him. The angel of the Lord came, in, which is encamped about the heirs of salvation. It said the angel touched and said unto him, Arise, Elisha, and eat. Arise and eat. Because he knew he was in a state of weakness. He said, you need to eat. And he, he, he began to feed him. And he looked and behold, there was a cake baked on the coal and a crust of water at his head. It was a cake baked on the coals. Now, this is really symbolic of the body of Christ. The body and the blood of Christ. He said, a crust of water and a cake at his head. God, right at his hand. It reminds me of the children of Israel when they were in the they had state and they were hungry. And they cried out to Moses and Moses cried out to God. And God, they begin to say, can God prepare a table in the wilderness? Can God feed us? 
We are famished. We are hungry. Can God help us? And the Bible said, God sent manna from above. And he let the quails ring down. They wanted meat. And he brought rock water out of the rock. The servant of God is in a place he need help. He need help. We all get to that place where we need help. Hallelujah. And he did eat and he drank. And through that, the scripture says here, and the hallelujah, he drank and laid down again. And the angel of the Lord came again the second time and touched him again. Because after he fed him the first time, he still laid there. He didn't have enough get up and go. Enough to go on, to keep going in the fight. God knows what we're going through. God knows when you reach your end. God knows when you have gone through so much that you can't get up and go again. And it says in the verse 7, the angel of the Lord came the second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for thee. You don't tell me that God don't know that you're going through. God knows that you're going through. He knows you. He said the journey is too great. He knows that Elijah has been fighting the devil. And that one word of the devil out of the mouth of Jezebel, Telling him, I'm going to kill you. In fact, the scriptures say, the devil goes to and fro, seeking whom he may devour. And this target, he got the man of God as a target. And the man of God is weary of the fight. He just said, Lord, it's too much. It's too much. Hallelujah. We go down to verse 8. And he arose and did eat and drink and went in the strength with meat the first time he gave him a crust of bread and he gave him water. This time he gave him meat. Now, the Jesus said his body is meat indeed. In fact, he told him, except you eat of my flesh and drink of my blood, you're no part of me. So we see here, this is symbolic of he's getting more of God. He's eating more of God, the meat. And it said when he did eat, he went in the strength of that meat forty days and forty nights unto Hor in the mouth, the mount of God. So he went on forty more days. He went on. And he came thither into the cave and lodged there. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him and said unto him, What doest thou here? You done went from the wilderness. Now you done moved into the cave. Still not headed in the right direction. Okay, he came out of the wilderness. Okay, but now he's in a cave. And God asked him, what you doing here? Okay. And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts. For the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thy altar, slain thy prophets and the sword. I even I am alone. I'm the only one left. The, at this point in Elijah's journey, he feels I am the only one left. There's nobody else but me. I am the only one left. I'm, 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 in other words, I'm fighting by myself, God. You know, sometimes you can feel like you're alone in the fight. You know, I always hear some people, of my bishop say, you know, that you, when God gives you the right connection, and people are with you, that, you know, that then you have the right uh, um, uh, people who God has connected with you. That's a blessing. That's a blessing. But the man of God is here saying, I'm by myself. I don't fault the prophets of Baal. The devil don't send a word by the mouth to, to tell me I'm a kill me. And at this day, he said, your people, they don't forsook you. I'm, I'm in the midst of people that you are fighting for God, and they don't torn down your altars. I'm, I'm on this journey by myself. I'm on this journey by myself. And sometimes it can feel that way. That take us to, we're not going to come finish the story of Elijah. Because God does go on to speak to him in a still, small voice. But we're going to go on to Psalms 39. Because we are talking about be still and know that I am God. Psalms 39 picks up from David. In 
verse 4. This is the psalm of David, the King David. David got into a place, too, where he was fleeing. He was fleeing. He was fleeing from Saul. He was experiencing trouble. And then David began to say in verse 4 of Psalm 39, Lord, make me to know my end and the measure of my days, what it is that I may know how frail I am. Lord, help me. Help me to know how frail I am. Behold, thou hast made my days as a hand's breath, and my age is as nothing before thee. Verily, every man in his best state is altogether vanity. Every man in his best performance, in his best way, is, is altogether vanity. God help me to know who I am and the state I am. Surely every man walketh in a vain show. This is King David. Surely they are all disquieted in vain. He heapeth up riches and knoweth not who shall gather them. What David is saying, Lord, I'm a man. And I'm at this state, help me to know my end. What is the end of my life? That's what Elijah said. You know, I, I'm at the state now. All this I'm going through, what's my end? David has said the same thing. And now, Lord, what waited I for? What am I living for? What am I experiencing this for? He began to say that. What am I going through this for? He began to say, Lord, all of the things I've experienced, my hope is in you. My hope is in you, God. You are my hope. You are my hope. And that's what even um, Job came to the conclusion. Job came to the conclusion of all that I've experienced, that my hope is in God. My hope is in God. And David says, begin to say, Lord, I can't find refuge nowhere else except in you. It's not in my things. It's all of its vanity. Solomon said it's all vanity. It doesn't bring any comfort. It doesn't bring any joy. It doesn't bring any peace. It doesn't settle my soul. When I am in the enemy is in pursuit of me, none of this quieteth me inside of me. None of this makes me content. God, my help and my hope is in you. Hallelujah. He began to say in verse 8, Deliver me from all my transgressions. Hallelujah. Make me not the reproach of the foolish. God, I need you to help me in this season and time. He said, I was dumb and I opened not my mouth because thou didst it. In other words, he said, Lord, I didn't even want to pray. I didn't even want to open my mouth because trouble came. He said, and God, I know my steps are ordered by you. You are the one that ordered my steps. That's why he said, Lord, you did it. Some people say, well, you know, God doesn't allow us to get in trouble. But it's not. David said, listen, my steps are ordered by, as a man of God and a woman of God, God orders your steps. Now, why he allow us to go through troubles and trials like he did with Job? Now, nobody can say Job was not a man of God. In fact, God said himself that he was upright. God said he was upright, but he allowed him to be going through tests and trials. In fact, the scripture said, don't think it's strange when these fiery trials come upon us to try us as though some strange thing happened. But we do think it's strange. I'm doing all I can possibly do. I'm living a life for God, and I am now, and the enemy is in pursuit. He was in pursuit of Elisha, he was in pursuit of David. He was in pursuit of Job. He said in verse 10 of Psalms 39, this is David talking, remove thy stroke away from me. I am consumed by the blow of thy hand. Lord, you have a reason for me experiencing these things. But Lord, he's like the Elisha. I had enough. I had enough, Lord. When thou with rebukes dost correct man for iniquity, thou makest his beauty to consume away like a moth. 
Surely every man is vanity. He said, God, when you with rebukes, thus correct man for iniquity. When you rebuke us, when you put us, in fact, the scripture says, every son of God will be corrected, will be chastened. As a son of God, as a child of God, we will go through times of rebuke. It said, David said, when thou with rebukes dost correct man. Now, Job's correction came to bring him to a new level of God. Elisha was going through. David is saying here, hallelujah, when thou with rebukes dost correct man for iniquity, thou maketh his beauty to consume away like a moth. All that we have clothed ourselves in, all that we think that we have, all of the, the things that we think that we can hold on to. Joe, I mean, uh, David is saying here, all of it is stripped away. It's stripped away. He says in verse 2, hear my prayer, O Lord, and give ear unto my cry. Hold not thy peace at my tears. For I am a stranger with thee, and a sojourner as are all my father's word. You know, it made me think about when David was trying to move the ark. The Bible said they was rejoicing, and they had taken the ark and put it on uh, 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 um, the ark of the covenant and put it on this beast. And they was going before, and they was rejoicing, and then the ark was falling. And uh, one of the men reached out to catch it and keep it from falling. And the scriptures say that God slew the man. The, God slew the man right there. God slew him. God slew the man right there. And at that moment, the scriptures say that David said, oh my, I'm afraid of God. I'm afraid of God. And he refused to move the ark any further. He refused to take the ark. But the ark was the, was the presence of God. Because sometimes we think we got God all figured out. But sometimes we will find out that God, as, as uh, we learn in the scriptures in Job, sometimes he work on the left-hand side. Sometimes God will do things that we don't understand why he allows us to go through it. He begins to say in verse 10, Oh, spare me that I may recover strength before I go hence and be no more. Lord, Give me my strength back. Give me my strength, Lord. Help me to be strong. Give me strength in this hour of my need, Lord. Help me. Help me. Praise God. And then we're just going to take us over to, praise God, Psalms 46. We have been following the, the, the scriptures relating to the men of God and the women of God that's going through that's going through various trials and tribulations. That's going through. Even though they are doing what you feel is right, but you can still be going through. Now Psalms 46, and we're going to read Psalms 46. It says, God is our refuge and strength. A pr very present help in trouble. Therefore, Will not we fear? Hallelujah. Though the earth be removed. And though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. Though the waters thereof roar and be troubled. Though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof. Hallelujah. There will not we fear. When we are going through troubling waters and troubling times. This is the song here says here of Korah. Hallelujah. He's one of the, the from the, tri the Levites tribes. He's one of the, the ones that sat around the, 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 the tabernacle. And he's one of the Levites. And he had written this song. He says, though these things come and trouble us, troubling times and troubling waters, it's like the storms of life are raging. Hallelujah. There's the storms of life are raging. Hallelujah. And they're raging right now. 
It's raging right now. But then he began to say in verse 4, there is a river. The streams thereof make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High God. Hallelujah. There is a river of joy. Hallelujah talks about the river of joy that flows through the city of God. Hallelujah. There is a river of joy. And the scripture talks about, I believe it's in Elijah too. It says that that river comes from the altar of God. And everywhere that river goes is healed. It's the healing waters of God. He come to heal the brokenness. The presence of God, in fact, the scripture said, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. That is none other than the spirit of God himself flowing from the altar and from the throne room of God. But the Korah began to say in Psalms 46, God is in the midst of this city, the tabernacle of the most high. Holly, we talked about dwelling in the presence of God. There's fullness of joy and life forevermore. Cora began to say, hallelujah, that God is in the midst. He reminds us, hallelujah, greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. He or those shunder that God is in board, hallelujah. He shall not be moved. Now, it, it, he talks about the city of God is built upon a sure foundation. And we're in that city. We are anchored on that sure foundation and not one state that means when you put down the stakes of something, he said not one stake of that city shall be moved. I don't care what comes. Hallelujah. You shall not be moved. Hallelujah. We are hardly the planting of the Lord. God shall help the city of God. God shall help the body of Christ. God shall help Jerusalem. God shall help the body. Hallelujah. He is our present help. He said, though the heathen rage, the kingdoms be moved. Hallelujah. He uttered his voice and God and the things before him are melting. The Lord is hope is with us. I was thinking about when they were going to battle. And Joshua saw the man standing with the sword drawn because they were getting ready to go into battle. And he said to him, are you for us? He let him, Joshua, know, I'm here, captain of the Lord of hosts army. I come to fight for the Lord. And God will dispatch his angel as he did with Elisha. As he did, hallelujah, in the time of Joshua. He sent the angel Hallelujah. To fight. They call them the, the warring angels, the ministering angels that sent forth to minister to the heirs of salvation, to minister for us. And he began to say in this song, the Lord of hosts is with us and the God of Jacob is our refuge. Hallelujah. Come, behold the works of the Lord. Come and see what God is going to do. What desolation he has made in the earth. Hallelujah. Faith David said when he cried to God, the heavens shook and God came down. Hallelujah. He maketh the walls to the war to cease unto the ends of the world. He maketh man be still. I don't care how much the raging and the walls. It says here in verse 9 of Psalm 46, he maketh walls a war to cease. Unto the ends of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in asunder and burneth the chariot in fire. God will still man. God, hallelujah, hallelujah. In fact, in Revelation, he said, when God got up, there was silence in heaven and the earth was silent because God said he can still make still. Be still. That's what it goes on to say in verse 10, in verse 10 of Psalms 46. Be still. Be still. Be still. Be still. Why are you tossed and driven with every wind and doctrine? 
Why are you tossing? I thought about the disciples on the ship when the winds were raging and the winds was going. And they said, Lord, don't you care that we perish? God said, be still and know I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. Be still and know. We're going on to Haliyah Shunda to Isaiah. We're going to go back to Isaiah. Go on to Isaiah, the 40th chapter. Learning that God is in control. 40th chapter, praise God. Beginning at the 28th verse. Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainted not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He gives, hallelujah, power to the faint. And to them that have no might, he increases strength. God, hallelujah, said to be still and know. Don't you know? Don't you know? Hallelujah. He doesn't faint. Hallelujah. He gives power to the faint. He gives strength to the weary. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait, hallelujah, upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. By God, hallelujah, hallelujah. He said in that chapter of, third, of 40, verse 28, Hast thou not known? Have you not known? Have it not really come to you yet that God, hallelujah, hallelujah, the everlasting God, the creator of the earth, hallelujah, fainteth not and is not weary. And the scriptures say he don't slumber nor sleep. So we're going to close with lamentations. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're closing with lamentation 3 verses 22 down to 26. It says, it is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed because his compassion. Hallelujah. Fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Hallelujah. The Lord is my portion, said my soul. Therefore will I hope in him. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him. To the soul that seeketh him. It is good that a man should both hope and quietly be still. Wait for the salvation Hallelujah. Quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. Wait on the Lord. Be of good cheer. Hallelujah. For he shall strengthen thy heart. Hallelujah. He shall strengthen thy heart. Be encouraged, saints of God. Hallelujah. As he said, be still, be still, and know that I am God. Hallelujah. He is a strong tower. We have refuge in him. Go off the day and remember these words. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassion fail not. In Jesus' name, let us pray. Father, we thank you for assuring us, giving us this living bread this morning. Even in the time of trouble, we can rest in you. We can be assured, Lord God, it is of your compassion that fail not. It is because of you, hallelujah, that we are not consumed. God, we thank you that you are our refuge, you are our hiding place. We thank and praise you for your peace which you have given unto us, not as the world, but you said my peace I give unto you. And God, we thank you for the peace of God which rests, rule, and abide in our hearts, henceforth now and forevermore. We yield ourselves to you, and we thank you and praise you that you are with us, hallelujah, and never leave us nor forsake us. Into our, thy hands we commit ourselves. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.